Happy Easter! At Ananda Village, Easter is a very special holiday when we gather together to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a time also when we inwardly renew our resolution to meditate more deeply, to connect with God, and to experience His presence within us. So for Easter, the menu will include vegetable frittata, oven roasted potatoes with herbs, steamed asparagus with dressing, mixed green salad with sesame ginger dressing, and pound cake with strawberries. I will start by lighting a candle. And I'll just start here with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, I bow to you all. Beloved Christ, bless me that I may feel your presence within and all around. Fill me with your love and joy that I may share it with all. Om Peace. Amen. So I will start by making the pound cake, which later on will add berries. And I'm heating the oven to 325. So here I have a loaf pan, which is a eight and a half inches by four and a half inches. And I will butter it a little bit first. Side. So it'll be easy to take out the pound cake later on. Okay. This is good. And I have here a piece of parchment. Put it in the bottom. Okay, I cut it to the right size. Okay, and I will set this aside here. Move this. And now I will first mix the dry ingredients. This is, by the way, a delicious pound cake. You will love it. This is a one and a quarter cups of whole wheat pastry flour, which I'll put in here. And to this, I will mix half a cup of yellow cornmeal. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Mixing first the dry ingredients. Together, before we add it to the wet ingredients. All right, so here it is. Let me move this. Okay, so now we can start with the wet ingredients. I will use half a cup of um, agave. Let me pull this up here. I'm adding it here to the mixer. You hear us? The oven is ready. Put everything in here. Gav is a nice substitute to sugar, healthy. You can use maple syrup also instead. And move this. And I have here um, three 
quarter cup of unsalted butter which I will put in here and I'll just mix them now together Butter stuck a little bit. I have to pull it down a little bit. It needed to be a little. You want to put it into room temperature. We did keep it in a room temperature, but have to move it a little bit down to mix it with the agave. So you want to soften the butter first, so it'll be easier to work with. better. A little faster. Very nice. now the uh, one teaspoon of vanilla extract and three eggs big eggs one at a time Lowering it a little bit. Sorry, but I did get a little piece of the egg, and I have to pause here for a moment. I think there was another piece that I have to. Just pull out. You see it? Those things happen. Here we go. Now we can go, go on. And we want to add the um, eggs one at a time. So we have two more, and those are big eggs. Close this. Looking great. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna wanna clean the edges a little bit, bring them a little bit down. And then I will add the dry ingredients to the wet. Alright, mix it just a little bit more.
Add it. So I'll move everything here. And now I can spoon the batter into the pan and you pull that up, take this off, shake it. Good. Put this here. Okay. So this is our batter. Spoon it into the pan. Almost there. Got it all. All right. So now I will try to flatten the top. smooth it a bit because after it's done cooked we flip it over so it's nice to have a flat surface to work with okay so this is this is good I'll clean a little bit the edges here And I will put this now in the oven and I'll bake it till it's about golden, kind of golden brown. You can use a tester to insert in the center to see that it's come up clean, but it will take about one hour. So this is 325, put that in. This is our pound cake. So now the pound cake, just a, um, see the timer just showing me 60 minutes. So I'm gonna take it out and we'll, we'll look at it. And we have a lot of things for the next dish. I will move this so you can see. great see the butter is still up and it will then absorb as it will sit you can use a wooden tester or just a thin knife and try that 
clean. It's done. Usually one hour is really done. And you can see it's golden brown. And I'm going to put it over here. Let it cool for 10 minutes. And then I will turn out the cake onto a rack. Remove the, the uh, parchment paper and let it cool for about 20 minutes. Now you can do this um, ahead of time, a day ahead. You cool it completely and then you wrap it tightly with a saran wrap and leave it in, in room temperature. And before you serve it, you want to heat it up again. Just warm it a little bit. So let me put this here to cool and you'll see gradually how the butter get absorbed back into the cake. And I'm going to turn the oven to 350. Okay, 350 is 40, 50. Uh, this will be for the frittata. And just one thing about the pound cake, you know, when I mix the agave with the uh, butter, I forgot to cut the butter into small pieces, which have made it easier to uh, mix it first. And then when I added all the, the flour, the dry ingredients, you just want to mix it until it's folded in. You don't want to overdo that. Okay. Now we are moving to the frittata, which is a wonderful dish of eggs with vegetables. First, part of it will be, move this, we're going to use um, broccoli. This is about two cups of small broccoli florets. We're using only the florets this time, not the stems. And I'm boiling the water. I'm going to let it boil almost ready. Yeah, actually it is ready. I'm going to put this in and put the florets in. That down and cover. Turn it down. I'm just going to do it. Clear this for three minutes. And meanwhile, we will continue with sauteing some uh, onion. Bring my skillet. And I will use olive oil, about quarter cup. Let me heat it up first. I will saute the onion with a little Celtic salt, one cup of onion minced, and to that I will add half a cup of red bell pepper. And you can cut it to very small pieces. It depends. If you like a little bigger, you can cut it to bigger pieces. It just depends how you like it in with mixed with the eggs. So put the olive oil in here. Let it heat up a little bit. And I will add the onion. And let me just grab one thing here. Needed this. Let's see how it is. Can use a I'll add it now. It's okay. It will start to sizzle very soon. With olive oil, I'm more careful. I don't like to heat it up very high. Put a little bit of Celtic salt. All that that will add a lot of nice flavor to the frittata. Put 
pieces here, medium um, high heat. And in about a minute, I will add the, um, the bell pepper to it. And then we have the rest of the ingredients. While this is happening, I have here eight eggs, um, which I will put in the, this bowl. While this is happening, this is Our broccoli, let me check that. So uh, it's good, let me just grab something here. Let's check that. Okay, I'm gonna turn it out off now and let it sit because it's still crisp, but um, it will steam a little bit more. Okay, now I can add this, I'm trying to stay uplifted. Easter time, remembering the presence of Christ. Just a little softening of the pepper, beautiful color red. I let it do its thing for. flatten this a little bit all right so now we'll do the egg part it's a quick dish to make it's nice to prepare the meal for Easter if you have children it's nice to do it with them Sharing that spirit of renewal. One more. Okay. So this is the eight eggs. And move this. And we're going to use a nine inch glass pie. our eggs, maybe a little bit more, getting the eggs, good, put that away, let me check, doing great, okay, nice, I'm going to turn it off, Now we're going to add everything to the uh, egg dish. We're starting with the one teaspoon of salt. Mix it in. We have here half a teaspoon of black pepper. Adding here half a teaspoon of paprika. Seasoning the egg. And to this, we will add now half, uh, actually a third cup of sunflower seeds ground. This is a nice way to add more protein into the, into the dish and a nice flavor too. Give it a body a little bit too. Then, now, I will add the one cup of the feta cheese crumbled. Not too, you don't want to cut it too small, just a little, you can see a little more of a chunk size. So you, it has a little, you can bite on it rather than 
Some people sometimes grate the um, feta cheese, but it's nice to have a little pieces in the frittata. To that, I will add the onion mix. Mixing this. The last dish, the last piece, we'll add the broccoli. Go, just the right timing. So it's a little bit more, and now we mix it in. And here is my pan. Let me clean the surface. From the egg. It's beautiful to look at that. I will put a little bit oil. Brush it. Okay. And let me move this. Take this here and pour that right into it. All right, straighten this out a little bit. So when it comes out, it will be beautiful, the top of the frittata. And the reason why I did the layering, because I've tried it in different ways, and I found that this way of layering really brings the, the more the colors of the broccoli. You could put first the broccoli with the eggs, and at the end, you're just adding the feta, it will be too white on the top. So wanted more of the broccoli pieces and a little bit of the um, specks of red to show. So I will put it now in the oven, 350, for about 40 minutes. You want to put it until the eggs are set. So let me just it for because I've tried it enough time I know my oven and it will be 40 minutes I want to show you one more thing here with the pound cake okay here it is and I will now am ready to flip that over it's about 10 minutes let me bring something Here is the rack, very convenient. Let me move this away. Move this away, clear the space. And now what I would like to do is to flip it over. Let me just get a knife. It's the knife. I don't even need, I think, the knife. I can feel it's very soft and it's not um, sticking to the side, to the walls, because we buttered it and it's not hot. I can hold it with my hand. And let's see, I'm gonna try it this way. See if it will come out, perfect. And you see, I take this off, come beautifully right out, okay? So now I will let it cool here for about 30, 40 minutes, cooling this completely. And then because we're doing it 
in with the other food, we will just slice it and serve it with uh, strawberries and whipped cream. So now the frittata is baking in the oven. And meanwhile, I will do the prepare the potatoes to be roasted in the oven with herbs. So I have here, these were six red potatoes that we have washed and scrubbed and we cut them into about one quarter chunks. Okay, so I will put this in here and I have melted four tablespoons of ghee. You can use butter if you prefer. Just pour it right on top. So the last drop. Okay. Mix it together. With that, we will add some three tablespoons of fresh rosemary. Um, I prefer to use the fresh and not the dry. It smells great. This is from my garden because the dry one, when you bake it, it becomes so stiff and hard. It really can prick your, you know, put it in the mouth. It's unpleasant. So if you don't have it, maybe you can buy fresh rosemary. So easy to grow. You can grow it in a pot. Um, so I just take it off. It's about three tablespoons. It's okay to use a little bit more. So I got a few sprigs and the smell is really wonderful, very fresh. Just a little bit more. So I just kind of, it's about three tablespoon. Got this. So I'm trying to slide it down. See if I can get this. All right. I think this is good. So this is our rosemary. And with that, this is dry thyme, half a teaspoon. Actually, one and a half teaspoons of dry thyme. You don't want to do too much of a time because it can overpower the flavor. One teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. So we can fold it all. Now we can put it on a cookie sheet. So let me move a few things. Take that. Bring my cookie sheet here. Put a parchment. Make it easy to clean. Put the potato right there. Spread them. So six potato will serve about four people. So the um, frittata is still in the oven. We're baking it at 350. Once this is done, Pull it out, bring the temperature to 425, and bake the potatoes for about 50 minutes until they are golden brown and crisp on the outside and soft on the inside. Every, every 15 minutes, I will turn the potatoes so all rounds become crisp. And later on, we can add a little bit more salt. Um, so this is about this and let me just remind you I'll just move this aside 
bring in this is our pound cake which I turn it first flip it over and then I brought it back up and actually the second time we wanted to cool for about 20 minutes no need to wait for 40 minutes you want it to be still warm when you are serving it so we're moving along we just wait for the frittata and then we bake the roasted potatoes and then now it's time to start making the final touches we make wonderful salad dressing, steam the asparagus, make a nice dressing for that too, and prepare also the strawberries that will go with the pound cake. So now the frittata is almost ready and I will show you and then we can put the potatoes in the oven. Meanwhile, I'll get ready the rest of the stuff doing the strawberry topping. And here are my washed strawberries. And I, will, I would like about three cups. And the pound cake will make um, for about eight, nine people. So here are the strawberries. I'm just going to cut top part. And I want to show you how I cut them. I just cut them in half. I like to do small pieces. Half, just like that. See? This can even be smaller. Maybe I'll cut it to two. So basically mincing the strawberries. So we want three cups of them of minced strawberries. And I will mix them with maple syrup. This is about two tablespoons for three cups. And I will let them sit absorbed in the uh, maple syrup and then the juice will start to, um, they will become more liquidy as they sit in the maple syrup. It will bring the juice out and that will be nice as we pour it on top of the pound cake. So we'll do that. Meanwhile, almost I'm excited. I'm looking forward to show you the frittata when it's ready. Said it was about, put it for 40 minutes. 3, 50, and I think it will be done. So this is a little piece that so it's all good. So this will take me a little bit. I'm going to keep going until we can, we have just a little time to get the um, frittata. And I want to, I want to show you. So you see how small I cut that? It would be nice. Now when we serve the pound cake with the strawberry, you can do whipping cream, but you can also use yogurt. Vanilla yogurt. So you know, I think we'll take a pause and when the frittata is ready, I will pull it out for you. So now the timer has beeped and I'm still working on the strawberries and let's Take out the frittata. It looks great. It looks set. Beautiful. This I think it is. See, what you do is you move it. It's still a little bit the um, fat on top a little bit. But other than that, it is completely set. It's not moving because if I would move it and it would be runny, you can see it. So this is all done. I'll turn the temperature to 425. So 
nice and warm here and I'll put I think I can put it now as it's coming up once it's reached 425 I will put the timer actually I will prepare it now to 50 minutes I'll just press the button when I hear the beep and meanwhile I'll continue to cut the strawberries and then we'll continue with doing the salad dressing and the steaming of the asparagus so now we have the potatoes in the oven they have about 36 minutes still to go meanwhile you see here, finish the strawberry three, about three cups, and I will put them right in the bowl. And strawberries can be a little tart. So adding the maple syrup, just two tablespoons, will help to bring the sugars out of the strawberry. And as they mix together, they will also soften. It'll be nice, nice and sweet for Easter. So just gently fold them together. Go. And I put them here on the side next to the pound cake. So this is one. And now I'm getting ready to do the ginger sesame dressing. Let me move this away. All right, so in a blender, very simple. Came up with this wonderful salad dressing not long ago. And I think you will like that. So a third cup of olive oil adding to the blender here we have two tablespoons of tahini paste made from sesame seeds nice source of protein and we have fresh ginger peeled and grated and we are using here about one and a half tablespoon you, of course you don't have to remember amounts because you have the recipe online uh, we have here about one tablespoon chopped scallion just the green part you can call it also green onion To that, we're adding one and a half teaspoons of rice vinegar, one and a half teaspoons of brag, one teaspoon of sesame oil, half teaspoon of Dijon mustard. and half teaspoon of honey okay this is that cover and blend finish blending the dressing and I know this is a big little cup I'm gonna use it as a saucer I just love this is Italian and I just love how they ceramics how they paint those little flowers that's why I'm using it no attachment but I'm gonna move this here 
Here is a little dressing that will go over the green, mixed green salad. It's a light sage green. Take the rest, put it in here. So we have done the salad dressing. The potato is still baking. And the last thing we need to do now is just steam lightly the uh, asparagus and then we'll add a little bit simple dressing on top of them. So now I would like to steam the asparagus. I'm now boiling the water for steaming it. And asparagus is one of the most nutritionally well-balanced vegetable. It has no fat and it's a great source of vitamins and fiber. So we have here about one pound which will serve about four to five people. And you want to cut, you can do it by with a knife or with your hand just to cut the woody, stringy stem of each spear and you just toss that. So I like to hold it and just see wherever it bends and breaks and I know that's the place. Some people use actually the rest of the stem, boil them and create a stock for soup. So I'll do that and steam them for about four to five minutes and then just do a very gentle dressing for it. I'm going to use salt, sprinkle some salt and then I will Put some black pepper, fresh, which I will grind, and a little squeeze of fresh lime. Okay, that's it. That will be the dressing for the asparagus. So I will finish this, and as you can see, I'm putting it in a steamer basket, which will sit, see it's already boiling, on top, so it's a little further away so of the water so I have a little bit more control of how fast it will steam. Be a little bit slower. If the asparagus is closer to the water <clears throat> it will need it will steam a little bit faster. Almost there. If you have a, a child they can do that. It can help you out. Easter is a wonderful time to you can cook with family members or friends. Here we go. So this is ready. Spread them throughout the basket. Oh, one fell. And put them here. And I will just put it. We have 10 minutes for the potatoes. I did fold them every 15 minutes and then this will be just for about four five minutes and then now we're ready to serve. This is our festive Easter meal. We have the frittata, the potatoes, the asparagus, the salad and the wonderful dessert and just a, a thought as an inspiration for you. Easter is a time of renewal and new beginnings in all aspects of our lives. Make this meal a celebration of new possibilities for everyone at your table. Give them not only good food, but appreciation for their positive qualities. Then you will be able to sow the seeds of greater personal fulfillment in your life. I like to end with a beautiful affirmation by Paramahansa Yogananda on renewal. Today I will plow the garden of life 
with the seeds of my new creative efforts. I will sow the beginnings of wisdom, health, prosperity, and happiness. And will wait for the divine to give me my much needed harvest. I wish you a very happy and blessed Easter and enjoy the meal.